Hello everyone. We'll talk about the implanted prosthetic steps in an easy and enjoyable way to talk about advantages and disadvantages of the approach and solve side effects in this prosthodontics on Friday. I am Jo Inho, the MC of the program. This is the second digital special lecture. Dr. Lee Soo Young of Seoul Line Dental Office is with us. You delivered a lecture last time, and uh, would you briefly describe what you are going to talk today? I talked about the four factors, important four factors, in running the digital dental office. I'm going to talk about the utilization and the selection criteria of intraoral scanners. I look forward to your lecture today. If you're watching this broadcast from the dental site, you can communicate with us in real time using the chatting window on the right hand side. Your questions will be answered during the Q&A session. Today, we have prepared a special gift. We will lucky draw 10 people who are participating in the real-time chatting window, and you will get coffee coupon if you are chosen. I ask for your active participation in the discussion. I ask Dr. Lee to begin. Today, I'm going to talk about the intraoral scanner, the definition, utilization of the scanners, and lastly, if you made up your mind to buy a scanner. There are so many intraoral scanners available on the market. Selection criteria of intraoral scanners so that you can choose what you want. I talked about the four factors regarding the intraoral scanners last time. And the intraoral scanner is the most cost effective, and uh, this is an essential part of for digital dentistry. And I'm going to talk about the scanner. Through the intraoral scanner, as you can see, we can obtain the data through the software. The data can be received and processed. CAD CAM is computer-aided design and computer-aided manufacturing. Just like that, we use the term CAI, which stands for computer-aided imaging. These days, young people use Photoshop when they take pictures using a selfie. They transform the pictures taken and they don't stand just looking at their bare face. To do so, we need to take picture first. After that, processing can be done. For digital processing in a dental clinic, there are two ways to acquire an image. One is to using an intraoral scanner and the other one is using a model scanner. As I said in the previous lecture, a model scanner can scan almost the full arch model or impression. It is rather bulky, so the price is rather low. It has been used uh, for a long time in a lab, and uh, those dentists who started digital dentistry early use a model scanner to scan a model or impression to get the digital data. In the past, the advantage of a model scanner, as you can see on the right-hand side, the filming elements are big, so the data amount is quite large by taking a picture. And with one picture, it can cover a large area. Therefore, it reduces the distortion. Cross-arch stability is very good. For simple crowns or bridges, it doesn't make a difference, but if you are talking about the cross-arch or fabricating a device, 
a motor scanner was quite advantageous, whereas intraoral scanner stitches many images taken individually. When you take a panorama picture, using yourself you can do that. You move the camera from left to right, for instance, to take the pictures, and uh, your hands were trembling while taking the picture, but uh, the frames are connected seamlessly. The kind of technology is utilized by the intraoral scanner. As you can see, in the dark mouth, the teeth are shining. The light is emitted in the dark area, and reflective lights are captured, so advanced technologies are incorporated in the scanner. Compared to a model scanner, intraoral scanners are adopted much more widely by the dentists these days. So I believe a model scanner is not really used by dentists. In my clinic, we have intraoral scanner and a model scanner, which is treated like a museum item that is not really used. Intraoral scanner, as I said before, is very accurate and precise. It is quite a lot advanced. Cross arch stability is excellent. So, be it a full arch or a cross arch or scanning for fabricating a device, intraoral scanner can cover all of those. So, this can be used quite a lot clinically. This model. He is an expert skilled in taking images. He is scanning the full mouth very efficiently. It took 16 seconds and 20 to take the mandible image. To take the full arch, as you can see, when you do the scanning, the images are connected with each other because the head size is small. The scanner tip should be inserted in the mouth, therefore it cannot be big. In the mouth, a patient moves and the surgeon moves as well. So image stabilization technology or the shiny teeth and the wet environment in the mouth should be overcome in the filming. Therefore, a lot of technologies are embedded in the intraoral scanner. In the past, uh, we didn't have many variety. About up to five years ago, uh, four or five products were available throughout the world, but now it is a commodity. So many companies manufacture intraoral scanners. So that was the definition of the intraoral scanner. Now let's look at how we can clinically utilize the intraoral scanner. We can say digital dentistry starts with the intraoral scanner. It can be utilized in so many different areas. In a local clinic, we do the workflow like this, diagnosis and treatment planning, restorative, and we do a lot of implant placement and the ortho treatment is delivered by many dentists. These four items are the treatment areas by local clinics, and most of them can be started with an intraoral scanner or utilize intraoral scanner. Let's have a look at one by one. Diagnosis and treatment planning. The image data after scanning can be used to analyze occlusion or premature contact or occlusal force. Depending on the software you use, your favorite articulator can be selected and it is mounted to analyze the occlusion. In the past, physically, we mounted a model on the articulator to visually check. Now, on the software, it is mounted and uh, virtually we do the analysis and uh, come up with the diagnosis and the treatment plan. If you use the ortho program or a diagnosis program, patient data can be uploaded, a tooth can be extracted or moved, 
creating or filling a space can be done on the software and uh, that is used to, to discuss it with the patient and uh, come up with the diagnosis and treatment plan. The second, restorative, I talked about it briefly in the first lecture. I'm a prosthodontist and this is used quite a lot by me. Inlay only laminate crown or bridge materials and softwares were introduced the last time using this in the clinic the treatment can be utilizing the digital images this is a case there is a secondary so it is prepared and on top of it within a short period of time using ceramic inlay only is fabricated the distal, most distal one is it's a vital tooth, so zirconia crown is designed and fabricated and attached. Various restorative treatment can be provided. 3D printing is used, as I showed you before last time. Various materials can be utilized to fabricate a surgical guide, a temporary or a model. This is the, in the category of restorative treatment. Impression is taken when we use the digital approach. We sometimes take impressions. Still, functional impression is my favorite, so I take analog impression for complete denture. Even so, we utilize the digital technologies like this. The tray can be easily made. The software to make the tray is provided for free on the internet. A tray is designed in a flash, space can be created, and retentive holes are made, or handle is made very easily. 3D printer prints out it. It takes just one and a half hours, and the post-processing in a standard way. So this is the same tray, just like the one made with the analog approach. A functional impression can be taken. So all of this starts with the scanning using the interauto scanner. And the tray is made using the digital image. A model can be made, a crown or a pattern can be fabricated. This is the custom abutment and zirconia crown, which will be put on an implant. Interauto scanner is used to scan them and uh, using a software, a model is made. So that's how it is used. Splint is my favorite. Fabricating a splint can be made very easy using the digital technology. Full arch impression taking is difficult and bite registration is really challenging. So on bite registration to fabricate a device is challenging. Using a digital technology, it is easy to control the patient movement and we can easily acquire the centric occlusion of a patient. It is easy to confirm them. You don't need to use the media in the middle to acquire them, so the confirmation can be facilitated. The design can be made easy. Like before, it can be printed. So splint can be fabricated rather easily. The interauto scanner can be utilized most efficiently compared to the analog approach. It would be the implant area. To digitalize the implant, interauto scanner is a must. Using the scanner, if you see the digitalized data, as you can see, these steps can be carried out one by one. Link abutment is used to create the custom abutment in the clinic. T base is provided by Austin. The top one, Miso, is a zirconia block milled to create a custom abutment. Emix block. There's one block which has a hole made in advance. It is designed and milled 
through proper processing, it is attached to the link to create a one-piece screw retained crown directly. I'll show you my case. This looks familiar. This is from Austin. The middle one is the link. On one side, the scan body and a screw on the other. Emacs block from Evo Clark is milled as it is Emacs. It is sent to the porcelain furnace. The color is changed. The link is sandblasted using resin cement. One piece screw retained crown is fabricated. Clinical process adaptation is checked. It is attached after taken out of the furnace and is tightened in the mouth of a patient to make the one piece screw retained crown. Other than the hybrid type, one piece titanium abutment can be fabricated using this milling machine. You can have it in your clinic or you can do just the design. Titanium rod with the connection which is available from Austin. You can use the lab to fabricate it at the custom abutment. This is how digital approach is used for the implant. There are many different types of scan bodies. This is a scan healing, which has the function of a healing abutment and a scan body. Using that with the scanner, the impression can be easily taken. This is the custom abutment designed and digitally. The image of the opposing tooth is acquired. The custom abutment and crown at the same time or PMMA provisional can be fabricated. It is scanned, custom abutment is connected, and zirconia crown is put on over it. So this is the IOS utilization for implants. May I ask a question? Sure. As compared to the scanning the natural abutment, versus uh, scanning the implants using the scan body. Is there any differences or anything to note? I have a similar story to be explained later. The biggest difference is that natural tooth scanning is done after complete the preparation. After scanning, crown designing is the next stage and the model is not changed. The completed preparation is scanned for implant scanning. After the scanning, the shape is made. So the natural tooth scanning is covering shape and the positions. Implant scanning does not cover the shape, only the positional relations, which is much easier if you take the impression in an analog way, it is much difficult to take the impression of an implant compared to the natural tooth. Digitally, scanning an implant is much easier. For analog impression taking, natural tooth is much easier than an implant. So iOS is optimized for implant treatment. I will elaborate on that later. So in utilizing an implant, the restoration can be fabricated with the acquired data. The process of placing implants properly, guide fabrication can be based on this scanned data using an appropriate software. One guide planning software to be launched by Austin is used and uh, intraoral scanned data is utilized by the software. Using that, a surgical guide is fabricated to place an implant properly. One MS is placed in the mandible. A surgical guide is made. The space is five millimeters, very narrow space, and in the middle, the implant is properly placed. I covered up to implant. I don't do this quite a lot. Orthodontic treatment can be utilizing the interoral scanners. 
there are two ways, clear aligner fabrication and IDB tray fabrication. First, the clear aligner, it is scanned and uh, using an appropriate software, the treatment plan and the final setup can be designed. The middle steps on the software, the data is uh, divided to each step and at each step, the model can be printed out with the clear aligner materials. Most importantly, full arch scan should be captured appropriately. Years ago, the intra-order scanner was not very good for full arch scanning. At that time, impression was taken with rubber through motor scanner, these steps were taken, but now iOS can be used. IDB tray, your favorite brackets can be entered, then the tray would be generated. Using that, it is designed. Indirect bonding tray can be used to insert your brackets and it is cured in the mouth, then very easily and accurately the brackets can be positioned that can be utilized in the ortho treatment. Based on your experience of using the intraoral scanner, when is the time that you're most satisfied with that? I started with the restorative dentistry so I used the inlay crown bridges quite a lot. With implant placement, I began to use scan body and I realized that the scan body is optimized for digital dentistry and um, digital dentistry is optimized for implant placement. I will elaborate on that later. Let me explain the scan body first. Austin has two products. One is the scan body and the other one is scan healing. Let me explain the principles of those with some slides. Conventional impression, as you can see, this is the patient's mouth. In the clinic, it is prepared and impression is taken and sent to the lab with the model in the lab. Restoration is made and sent to the clinic and we do the adaptation and attach it. This is the conventional impression taking. The same is true for posterior region. The preparation is completed. Impression is taken with rubber and sent to the lab. And the stone model is made. The dye trimming is done. Eventually, restoration is made and that is sent to the clinic where it is attached. Conventional impression taking on the left after the preparation is completed. Impression is taken with rubber, which requires the shape of an abutment and the adjacent tooth. Also, the positional relationship between the prepared teeth or the prepared tooth and the adjacent tooth. So both of them should be registered that's the analog impression. Digital impression is different. To fabricate these impressions are taken. What we need is the depth and position of the implant placed up to the relations with the gingiva. We don't care what will be on top of them because the superstructure will be selected after impression is taken. We can select a stock abutment or a custom abutment befitting the patient. It can be designed and printed out. So, compared to analog impression, digital impression is acquiring the positions and the relations. It transfers the position rather than the shape. That is the characteristics of the digital impression. This is analog process. A healing abutment is disconnected and pickup impression coping is connected 
in a standard way, impression is taken. We have to be really careful in doing this process to make the bone model. Ultimately, the model is created, which is a very complicated process. Some days ago, recently, I use ostium implants in most cases. I have a patient who received another company's implants and uh, from abutment to superstructures that need to be replaced. We have only ostium scan bodies and uh, I was discussing the problem with our staff we may have to take analog impression taking and our staff got mad we cannot do that just up to five years ago we naturally took the conventional approach for impression taking now our staff do not want to go back to the analog way of impression taking so digital impression taking for implants is very accurate and much easier. So it's like um, we are used to taking high-speed train and we have to go back to the slow train. That's right, when all the seats are taken in the express train, we have to take the slow train. Exactly. So digital impression taking means the fixture depth and the angle of the implants need to be captured pickup impression coping or analog impression coping, implanted position cannot be directly acquired, so impression coping is used. Digital impression taking is the same. We cannot see the fixture. It's in the dark, so scan body is connected. Scan body looks like this. It is a long cylinder, and there is a deep cut at the top. The impression is taken and the scan body should be chosen by clicking on the screen, then purple ones appear on the screen. The deep cut part would be aligned, then at the bottom the fixture data can be attached on the software on the screen what implant, the diameter, the length of the implant, the position of the implant can be captured very accurately. Austin has two types, scan body and scan healing. As I said before, pickup impression coping and transfer coping are used for analog impression coping. One is for accurate impression and the other one is easy impression. Optical impression we have the scan body for accurate uh, impression taking a conventional way so healing is disconnected and scan body is connected periapical connection is checked on the x-ray and scan can be acquired the cut part the deep cut needs to be acquired so the scanning doesn't need to include the bottom part then impression taking is completed so impression taking is very easy gingiva and adjacent tooth should be included including the deep cut so impression is taken custom abutment is fabricated it can be provisional or final restorations and um, scan healing is uh, simpler to use it can serve as a healing body, so it's short. It is equivalent to the transfer coping in the analog impression taking, which is easier to use. So there are many different approaches. It is very low, the height of healing abutment. After surgery, the patient can keep it until the osseo integration is finished or when impression is taken it can be replaced briefly and it is scanned custom abutment or crown can be completed so it serves two purposes with one that's right 
that's the purpose of creating that. Healing doesn't need to be replaced in the middle. That is the advantage of that. So what I said is the utilization of iOS. So at the end of the day, if you decide to adopt these digital devices, and you need to think and select the equipment. This is very expensive. It is as expensive as a unit chair. So to help you to select the intraoral scanners, let me give you my subjective selection criteria. This is something hard to make it objective. Based on my experience, I came up with this selection criteria. What is the criteria? What is the purpose of the use for restoration or appliances? It doesn't really matter whether you purchase a model scanner or intraoral scanner. At one time, we had to think about it because we had a full arch appliances, which is big, and the restoration is small. Now, intraoral scanner can cover the appliances, no problem. A new model or an old model, or is it taking pictures or videos? Or in terms of software, is it the company's software, the company which produces the intraoral scanner, annual fee? When you purchase a scanner, Sometimes annual fees need to be paid, cross arch stability, and scanning speed. So these are the items of selection I thought about in the past, but we don't need to consider them anymore because of the rapid technological developments. I want to talk about these first. There are many items, and this is not my slide. It's from the internet. If a scanner is too big or too heavy, it is hard to handle. It is important. The scanner is held by a male. If it feels heavy, you need to hold it like this in this posture for two to three minutes. It would be difficult. And the hygienist would do this scanning. So if a female staff feels it very heavy, it's not good, so it should be like rule of thumb, five, less than 500 grams. And the teeth are shiny. The intraoral scanner didn't work very well, so we had to do spraying on the teeth, and that's not really desirable. If you have to use the intraoral scanner using a sprayer, it's not good if you are talking about gold crown or metal restorations, then you need to do the spraying because there are so much reflective lights. But if the prepared natural tooth requires the spraying, which is tens of microns in thickness, so that is not very good. So this is the spraying in the video. It shows after spraying powder on the teeth, the scanning is being performed. So it adds thickness, therefore it may not be good. So this is the picture from the internet. In general, the size and the annual fee need to be considered not relevant to Korea. What I want to say here is that in capturing data, there's principle the, to get more accurate, the precise images, confocal laser technology is better than triangulation. What is the most important thing? Prices. I saw on golf ball ad on TV, and it says if the flying distance is the same, the lower one in price or for the same spinning, the prettier one would be better. The one with the clear image is better. Clinically, sterilizing a tip is important, whether the tip can be sterilized. These days, we are sensitive to it in a dental office. 
in the past, the people did not really pay attention to it. Even the patients, the tip needs to be sterilized. And if it is sterilized, how many times can we use it? Because it costs money. That's why it's important. I don't really want to mention a brand name, but I'm just a clinician. Based on my experience, I can talk about these representative ones. Trio scanner from 3Shape, Omnicam or Prime Scan from Sirona, Medit, and other third party players have scanners in, I'm not trying to say a specific brand. They are the representative ones. 3Shape and Sirona are traditional strong players with decades of history of producing intraoral scanners and they can be in one group of companies. Picture type is no longer used and they use video type. The companies have long history, so they have their own software, which is important. In the past, they used the proprietary software that works only for the company scanners, but they changed the proprietary to open type software around 2015 and uh, they generate the output in STL format for higher compatibility. They have longer history so the product would be more stable, especially the three shape scanners have many different types, cart type, pot type, wired or wireless type. And the disadvantage of these products is relatively very expensive. And there is monthly fee or annual fee, but it depends on your perspective. Whatever the electronic device might be, they need to be upgraded. Software as well as firmware need to be upgraded to enhance the performance of the device. In general, some companies don't charge annual fees, but uh, they charge for the upgrades in many cases. So, if you don't want to get upgraded, you can just uh, use as the old version. If you are paying the annual fee, the firmware is always up to date, whether you want it or not. So, maybe they are the same. However, the annual fees can be charged, and this is rather sensitive, therefore, for example, 3Shape charges the annual fee. I believe it was in May. They talked about the scanner without the annual fee, and you need to check up on that. One more thing, Medit and others, the companies who joined the market rather late, following the major companies, their product performance is very good and they're relatively inexpensive compared to the major companies and uh, their output is in STL or OBJ format, not a specific proprietary format. So um, it has the compatibility with the other companies' devices and software. You can use other companies like 3Shape and uh, Sirona. Designing their own proprietary software is quite expensive. They operate the software, but uh, they are not very strong in designing their own software compared to the major players. I said 3Shape has a very a variety of intraoral scanners. You can see different shapes. One is pen type and the other one is a handle grip with gun-like shape. And on the right hand side, the upper one is the wired scanner and below you see the wireless scanner. I believe wireless is uh, very attractive in terms of the configuration. The pod type, the laptop and the pod can be moving between the chairs. And there is um, one body integrated type, the cart type. 
You can impress patients with this card type, the state of the art looking card type. The disadvantage of that is that uh, it is difficult to upgrade the computer like a graphic card or CPU because they're all in the body. But in the case of the pod type, you can just upgrade your laptop. This is the latest one. Move. Very stylish. 15.6 inch screen is mounted and you can hang the scanner on the hook and then below you can see the computer and you can impress your patients with this stylish equipment. So this can be used for promotional purposes and if you have six or seven chairs in a big space, the cart or laptop would be hard to move around and the wireless one can easily use to, at different locations. So you need to consider these factors in choosing one. But you need to be careful about one thing. You should never drop it. If you drop the scanner, usually the frontal part is heavy, so it can easily get broken. It is very costly to get it repaired, and uh, it takes a long time to get it repaired. I already spent 40 minutes. Intraoral scanner is a lecture a full day lecture in the master course. I try to condense um, the contents and I talked very fast. Thank you very much for the good presentation. It was very interesting in selecting the intro or scanners. There are so many things to consider. You have given us the lecture. If a dentist who has a private practice, so what should we consider the most importantly? When we try to adapt digital dentistry or not, we had to consider it carefully, just like that. We need to determine what we will do with the intraoral scanner. That is the most important thing. For example, if you want to use it for implant placement, for example, if you want to take impressions digitally, you heard that it would be very easy and accurate, then a certain type of scanners can be the candidates. But um, if you want to start like that, however, if you want to expand the usage in various areas, creating restorations, or I want to use it for zirconia crown milling, and we need to consider the software. What sort of software you want to use should be considered, and a scanner that matches well with such software can be selected. Most importantly, what you want to do with a scanner should be determined first before you selecting a scanner. Thank you for your answer. So this concludes the lecture of Dr. Lee Su Young. We will answer some of the questions received in real time. Let's look at the questions posted in real time on our dental site. It says, Dr. Lee, you look very stylish today. And Starbucks coffee coupon is given out. So some people are delighted by it. The ID name Bike says, I plan to purchase a scanner soon. Is there anything to be careful about in handling the scanner? I think this is a very important question. In the last slide, you saw that regular calibration. It is a digital device. So, point zero should be accurately adjusted. And sterilization, according to the manual. One more thing, 
You should not drop it. I repeat it again. I've seen so many cases where my junior dentists had to receive repair after dropping them. Not dropping them is very important. You need to calibrate them and you need to train your staff not to drop them. Those are the important things. Thank you very much. Yeonji Shi sent us a question. I want to start the digital dentistry with a temporary. What instruments like scanners, software do I need? Would you give me more specific names of them? So if you are a teacher, you need to give very strong hint to the students what exam questions will be. But this is a lecture in Austin studio. It's really hard for me to pinpoint specific names. I try to be a little bit ambiguous. You started with a temporary, but do you want to do it for final two or just up to a temporary? Just for temporaries, chip scanners would be the answer. Temporary is a temporary. You don't need very accurate, very precise scanner, but I believe you will eventually want to do the final prosthesis with it. For that, you can consider the companies whose names I mentioned during the lecture. The high-priced software is versatile, including Maryland Bridge. A temporary is not something like that, so general purpose or freeware can be used. Low priced, especially the monthly fee based software, dental software can be used. You pay the fee every month to try on a temporary. And if you are satisfied with it and you want to move on to the final prosthesis, then you can purchase a software or you can use a lab service. You scan it and send it to the lab. They have all the software and you can have them fabricated or get the file, designed file from the lab. So the lab can send you the file. Yes, the design file, they design. You need to pay the lab fee. It is not for the fabrication, but the, for the design work. 3D printers are very cheap. Last week in the CDEX, Austin launched the LCD 3D printer with a price of 3.7 million won. So you can print it out using the printer and use it on a patient and you realize the value of digital and get immersed in the digital world. But you should not choose a very cheap scanner from the beginning. I'm sure the dentist will want to use it for the final prosthesis eventually. Yes, you can buy a scanner with a certain level of performance. That would be good. In the past, we upgraded incrementally, which cost more um, when we upgraded our presentation slide system. Next, Brilliant KS, the ID name, sent us a question. This is an ignorant question whenever scanners come out to the market. If I buy one now, when until when will I be able to use it? Because digital devices get upgraded so fast. I bought my first scanner 2012. It is still used. What is important is that if the scanner is satisfactory in your clinical work, that is important. If I bought it earlier than 2012, I should have changed, upgraded the machine. I waited until 2012, until the satisfactory product came out. What is important is the paradigm shift. The machine upgrade is not so important. Let me take an example. If you bought a car 10 years ago, 
Do you need to throw it out now? New cars come out every month, faster cars, new style cars. And I bought a car 10 years ago, and it is still satisfactory. You can continue to use it. You can drive it to up to Busan, right? Yes. For the purpose, if it is satisfactory, you can continue to use it. The same is true for the scanners. If it is no problem in creating a crown bridge and others, no need to change them. In the car industry, the engine cars are being given up by assembly companies and they move to electric vehicles. That's the paradigm shift. The concept is changed. Analog to digital, that is the trend. But within the digital, whether you choose A or B or more recent one, doesn't matter. It's in the same category of digital. So you don't need to be too much concerned about the fast upgrading of the devices. And the paradigm is changed and the paradigm will continue to thrive long into the future as the change happened just recently and uh, if you are satisfied with the scanner even though it is an old model compared to your friends which was purchased three years later than you as long as your scanner works for you utilizing it longer time can be more important to answer that question it can be used for years not only for years but for decades next question the annual fee is too burdensome. What do you think about that, Dr. Lee? I think it's burdensome too. As I said before, it is on plus and minus if you weigh the two options like forcibly paying the fee. As you can see, the machine is being upgraded every year in it seems like too early to buy a device now. In the past, the device turnover rate was very fast, but now the devices don't get changed too often, but the technology level today is better than before. The firmware, which is in between the hardware and software, it is not soft, it is not hard, but it is the middle level. The form, firmware is being updated constantly to optimize the device. The same device three years ago is quite different from today in terms of the performance. The fee imposing companies maintain the firmware constantly to keep it up to date. And the other option is you pay for the firmware software upgrade. So that's the difference between the two options. And you need to consider the pluses and minuses. If you want to keep up to date the status by forcibly paying the fee, or you want to have the freedom for the upgrade, even though you pay for it. Thank you very much for the good answers to real-time questions. Those who are participating in the real-time chatting, I would like to express my appreciation to you. By drawing raffles, 10 participants will receive Starbucks coffee coupons this concludes the Q&A, and then next time we will have um, a digital special lecture. What are you going to talk about next time? Just briefly, digital story. I have so many stories to tell, but we have constraint of time. Next time, I'm going to talk about 3D printers. Up to now, I talked about the image acquisition and software the tangible appliances or restorations require printing and um, milling machines. So I'm going to introduce those machines. Thank you very much. 
I look forward to your next lecture. I hope we have very good lecture next time as well. Prostodontics on Friday. Today, we had a special lecture with Dr. Lee. I hope the lecture has been helpful or beneficial to you. The questions not answered now will be answered as comments online. Next digital special lecture will be delivered by Dr. Lee Soo Young. Thank you very much for watching us until the late hour. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.